Hello, we are continuing with our review of sinusoidal signals as well as complex exponentials because we are going to use them a lot throughout this course. So in this example, what I'm going to show you, given that the students ask all the time, why are we using complex exponentials as opposed to just the cosines? And my answer, and the answer is that it makes the math much easier in the manipulation, the analysis of these signals, becomes much easier with complex exponentials. As an example to show how it makes the math much easier, let's use them to prove some of these trigonometric relationships. When you studied your trigonometry back in high school, likely you had to memorize trigonometric equations. There was no other way. You could derive some of them, but mostly something like this, you just had to memorize. Now, when you're working with complex exponentials, you can just forget about all of those. You likely forgot about them if you are like me, but you can just derive them on demand when you need them. So this is an illustrative example of how complex exponentials makes math much easier. So let's prove this. So cosine of theta 1 plus theta 2. What can you do with cosines? Well, you are not able to, you're stuck. You are not able to move on. Now, um, the relationship between the cosine and the real and the complex exponential is that it is, if you recall, e to the j theta equals to cosine of theta plus j sine of theta. Or you could say that the cosine is the real part of e to the j theta. So you, you have this. Cosine of theta is equal to the real, that's the real operator. It picks an expression and only takes out the real part of the expression of e to the j theta. Okay? So if you do real of e to the j theta, <coughs> because j sine of theta is imaginary, it just gives you the cosine. So with that, we have that this will be the real part of e to the j theta 1 plus j theta 2, right? And so let me just move here. And this is equal to, oops, the real part of e to the j theta 1 times e to the j theta 2. And this is what you cannot do with cosines, but you can do with exponentials. You can separate things. And so with this, once you have done this step, which is what you what was intractable, what is the addition? Now we can convert them back if we want and just work out the math. Real time of the re sorry, the real part of cosine of theta one plus cosine. So this is j sine of theta one. I'm just using Euler formula there times cosine of theta two plus j sine of theta two. So again, we are using Euler formula. Here. And we have the real operator because the cosine is the real part of e to the j theta. And so all you have to do is multiply these two. So cosine of theta 1 times cosine of theta 2, is that real? Yes. The real operator, therefore, allows us to keep it. Cosine of theta 1 times cosine of theta 2. Now let's do this other. J. Actually, let's do this one. Let's multiply the cosine one. Cosine times cosine is real. Got it. Cosine times j sine of theta. We have a j. It's imaginary. Therefore, the real operator does not pick that out. And that basically we finish with the cosine multiplication. 
J sine of theta 1 times cosine of theta 2, real or imaginary? Imaginary. We don't, the real operator does not allow us to extract it. It's imaginary. J sine of theta 1 times J sine of theta 2, real or imaginary? Well, J, imaginary number, times J gives us minus 1, and so it is real. Right? And so we have minus sine theta 1 times sine theta 2, because j times j is equal to minus 1, and that's what I have there. And so we are done in this case, where we show that cosine of theta 1 plus cosine of theta 2 is equal to cosine of theta 1 times cosine of theta 2 minus sine of theta 1 times sine of theta 2. Now, I'm not interested in the result. This activity is not, oh, we are going to need to use this result. No, it is to illustrate how complex exponentials can make the math easier. And a problem that was not mathematical, tractable, mathematically tractable, like what is cosine of theta 1 plus cosine of theta 2 equal to, which previously likely you had to memorize to just simply be able to derive. Now, this is an illustrative example. You can derive all your trigonometric relationships just using this. I mean, you're using Euler's equation, and then, because you're going to be working with Sines or cosines, you are either using the real operator, which picks e to the j theta and just picks the real part, or picks a complex number, this real operator, you pick a number x plus j, y, real will pick x, or the imaginary operator, if you have a sign somewhere, x plus j, y, will pick y output. And so with this, if you recall what we did, we convert the cosine to its equivalent in complex exponential. That because it is the real part of this expression, we have the real operator. Once we did that, we were able to, to separate this plus theta 1 or theta 1 plus theta 2. Here, yeah, once we did that step, that the construction step, that separation step, we were able to just go back with the Euler formula and work it out. In some others, you can just use the inverse Euler formula to work them through, which we already proved this relationship in the previous video, previously. Again, one concluding remark. Why are we doing these problems? Fundamentally, we are doing them to get comfortable working with sinusoids and complex exponential sinusoids. And why? Because they are the fundamental building blocks of all other signals. And they are really important when studying linear time invariant systems, which is the mathematical machinery, that plus Fourier analysis, the idea that any signal can be decomposed into a sum of sinusoids when we are looking at digital signal processing. Okay, thank you.